Hi, Jessica. Hey, welcome to my FM. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hi. Good. Now, I'm doing so good, thank you. Good, good. Now, first I want to know, have you watched Survivor in the past? Yes, right? Yes, I have. Okay, so who's your favorite player? Like, who has really stood out to you in previous seasons? I am cliche, but I say Boston Rob, and that's just because I kind of started watching when I was young around his season, and I had the biggest crush on him, and I loved, like, him and Amber's story. And then to watch him, like, keep playing and just dominate the game every time he came in, so Boston Rob is, is my favorite. So do you realize that you are now that memorable person to a lot of Survivor fans? Isn't that weird? I, I like, I realize it, but like it hasn't sunk in yet. And like I'll have people say things like at the finale, you know, like that's how you play the game. Yeah. It was so surreal. Like, and it's just a weird moment, but it's so much fun. Yeah. Honestly, you played an amazing game and I seriously think you are who made the season so great. And I'm sure everyone's been telling you that. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, this was also your first time playing Survivor, and you sort of flew under the radar at first, but near the end, you were making huge moves. Did you purposely do that, or did it just sort of happen? No, I. that was my. Um, that was kind of my strategy going in. I knew at the beginning of the game uh, the challenges are a big part of it because you don't want to let your team down because they want to keep the tribe strong because so they're getting rid of the weak people. Yeah. And I'm so... I was so bad at the challenges, and I knew I wasn't going to be good at them. So I had to build really awesome relationships with people early on in order for them to keep me around and look past the fact that I was bad at those challenges and kind of just fly under the radar. And then I knew when I got to the merge, I needed to start making big moves because you have to build your resume, you know, to get those votes at the end. I can't just fly under the radar the whole time and expect to get votes. So my strategy was under the radar, merge hit. Make some, make something happen, make some big moves, start building that resume. And of course, the most shocking moment of the season was when you voted your mom out. Was what was it like playing with your mom and then sort of playing kind of against her? Um, playing early on with my mom, you know, we'd go to challenges and I look over and I had this mindset. And it's so silly now looking back, but I'm like, my mom should be throwing these challenges for me <laughs> because she's looking over, knowing like I'm going home. Yeah. And every time I look at her, like, come on, mom, like, go easy on me. And no, she wouldn't every single time. So early on, that like, was a frustrating thing for me. And then when we merge and she comes back into the game and I get to like play with her, it was fun and it was really awkward and weird because it was a role reversal of me telling my mom, hey, look, like I've been in the game now with these people for, you know, I don't know, 15 days, 18 days. I don't know what day it was. And this is how this person is. This is how we handle this person. This is who we're in alliance with. And it was such a role reversal and weird. And then when it came time to write my mom's name down, it was a really hard decision for me to make. But ultimately, one person can win. And I had this fear that I keep my mom around longer and then people start to get wise and they want to split me and my mom up because that would happen. Mm-hmm. And then my mom wins a challenge and uh, I'm the one just by default. They vote me out because I didn't win and my mom won. Yeah. So I had that fear. So I knew I needed to get rid of my mom before my mom Not purposely, but wins a challenge and then I go home. Yeah, that's right. And what was it like for you sitting, um, watching the duels, seeing your mom, you know, beat everybody week after week after week? Like, that must have been such a good feeling for you. Oh, it was amazing. My mom, like, I try and describe to people how she was out there. Dude, watching on TV, like, doesn't even do it justice. She would be done 10, 15 minutes before everybody else. And she makes it look easy. She, like, comes in with, like, such confidence and, um... And just, like, poise and, like, calmness about her for every challenge. I can just look at her and I'm like, okay, she's got this. And every week people are like, what is your mom's deal? I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's so good. (laughs) I know. I felt bad for her because I was interviewing her yesterday and she was talking about how she had a knee surgery and that's why she couldn't do so well in the final challenge. Yeah, when I saw that challenge, we knew balancing was, like, not going to be good for her. I, I, we are, I, like... We had talked about it before we came out here. So seeing that was the last challenge, I already, I don't want to say she lost, but it was like it could be an easy one for her to win. Oh, it's too bad. I really was hoping that you two could have taken it to the final uh, end. But uh, as much as I hated that you got voted out, could you really blame Tyson, Jervis, and Monica for making that move? Because had you have made it to the final travel council, you probably would have won. Would you agree? Yes, I think I at about final six or seven, I looked around and realized I could be sitting next to anybody and win. Yeah. And... And that's a great feeling, but it's also a scary one because you know that they're thinking that too and they want to get rid of you. So I don't blame them, but at the same time, somebody like Monica, who had an opportunity to make a big move, 
I, I don't know. I, it's frustrating playing with people who don't want to make those big moves. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially for somebody like me who wants to. It's frustrating being with somebody who's going to just not even do anything. Like I was telling her, you're not going to win. And everybody's telling her, you can't be. So you might as well take a risk and try. Right. Because you have a better chance of taking a risk and trying and going to the finals with me and saying, hey, look what I did. Maybe some people respect that. Versus having, you know, one vote and that was Vetus. And the only reason he voted for you is because he didn't want Jervis to have second. Right, like it was kind of like Monica was okay with being third place in her mind during the game. She was, yeah. And it was it's frustrating playing with, with that. Like I want to play with people who want first and we're all fighting for it. You yeah, know? that's right. But it is what it is. Ultimately, Tyson played amazing. He played incredible. Jervis did really good. Monica did great to get to where she was at. I just wish somebody wanted to like to stir it up a little bit. I know, me too. It makes for such uh, such better TV when something like that happens. So, Sierra, I can totally. almost yeah, I can almost guarantee that you will be asked to return to the game. So, if Survivor did invite you back, would you go back? Oh, thank you. I would go back in a second. It like literally a second. It's like I, it's like this sick thing where you're out there and you don't want to, you want to be at home, mm-hmm. and you're like, I want my bed, and now I'm home, and I'm like, I want to be out on the beach, and <laughs> you know, it's just this weird feeling. But I would go back in a second. Awesome. Well, hopefully we see you on another season of Survivor, and thanks for joining me today on my FM. Thank you so very much. Have a great day. Merry Thanks. Christmas. You too. Bye-bye.